Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our third example of how to do a three-fourths body problem. So we know this is in equilibrium. We have a wheel here that we're trying to pull across the curb. There's a 20 centimeter increase in the height there. The radius of the wheel is 50 centimeters. We're pulling with a tension right there that we're trying to find out how much the tension is. And we also want to find the action at A right here. We do know that the weight of the wheel is 200 newtons. So how much tension does it take to get the wheel to come up on top of this curb and what will be the action at A. And of course we know that when there's a three-fourths body uh, or a three-fourths problem that the line of actions of all three forces need to come down to the single point right here. So that's why we know the direction of the force that acts at A. We know that the direction of the weight is directly downward and we were given that the tension makes an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. So let's go ahead and graph those three forces into a triangle. Draw it like this. Here we have the tension. Here we have the force acting on A. And then here we have the weight of the wheel. Get rid of this extra length here. This is the weight. This is the force at A. And this is the tension right here. And then we realize that the tension makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Of course, what we don't know, we don't know the angle right here. Once we know the angle here, we'll be able to figure out the angle there. And of course, the angle up here has to be 60 degrees. So we need to find the angle here. Now coming back over here, let's see if we can do that. If we draw a line directly across from here, notice that this angle here relative to the vertical, so I'm looking for this angle, is the same as this angle right here. This angle is what I'm looking for. Let's mark it over here. And let's call that angle, well, theta, because we haven't used theta yet. That's the angle theta right here, which means that this is the angle theta up here, because these are what we call alternate interior angles. Now let's take a look at this triangle. I'm going to redraw that triangle right here, a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see. And of course, that's not a very straight line. Let me try that again. We're looking for this angle right here, the angle theta. This here is the hypotenuse, which is equal to the radius of the circle. So that would be equal to r, which is equal to 50 centimeters. And notice that this distance right here, which is the same as this distance right here, is equal to the radius of the circle minus the height of 20 centimeters. That's 50 centimeters minus 20 centimeters. So this one is 30 centimeters. So now we have the hypotenuse. We have the adjacent side to the angle. We know that the definition of cosine of theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, the adjacent side would be 30 centimeters and the hypotenuse would be 50. That allows us to find the angle theta. So we say that theta is equal to the arc cosine of the ratio of 30 divided by 50, which is 0.6. What is going to be the angle there? So 0 0.6, oops, 0 0.6, take the arc cosine, and that gives us 53.13 degrees. Theta is equal to 53.13 degrees. That would be this angle right here, which is the same as this angle, which is the same as this angle right here. So this angle here would be 53.13 degrees. That tells us what this angle is over here, because that would be 90 minus 53.13. So put a minus there, plus 90 equals 36.87 degrees, 36.87 degrees, which means that these two combined give you an angle of 66.87 degrees. So now we have the three angles, this angle right here, this angle right there, and this angle right there. We have the three angles. We do know that the weight is equal to 200 newtons, so we have one of the sides. Now that allows us to find the magnitude of the other two sides using the law of sines. So we can say that T divided by the sine of the angle directly across it, which would be the sine of 53.13 degrees, is equal to F sub A, the, the force or the action at A, divided by the sine of the angle directly across from it, that would be the sine of 60 degrees, is equal to the weight of the wheel, the weight divided by the sine of the angle directly across it would be the sine of 66.87 degrees. And we know what that is equal to. So this here, 
this is equal to 200 newtons. Now we're able to find the tension and the force at A. Starting with the tension, we're going to set the tension T divided by the sine of 53.13 degrees equal to 200 newtons divided by the sine of 66.87 degrees, which means that the tension is equal to 200 newtons times, putting this up here, the sine of 53.13 degrees divided by the sine of 66.87 degrees. Let's find out what that's equal to. So we have 200 times 53.13, take the sine of that, and divide that by uh, the sine of 66.87 degrees equals, and that gives us a tension of 174 newtons. So that's the force required to pull the wheel onto the curve at that very moment. Now doing the same for the action at A, the force at A is equal to, that would be 200 newtons times the sine of 60 degrees. and divide the whole thing by the sine of 66.87, the sine of 66.87 degrees. So let's find out what that is equal to, 200 times, take the sine of 60, and divide by 66.87, take the sine of that, equals, and we get 188 point, hmm, about three newtons. Here's the tension, and here's the force at A. So we found this, we found that, and it looks like we're good. That's how we do that. Again, the key here is if we have a three-force body system where we have three force acting on a single body, then we want to be able to draw that into a triangle. We realize that all three forces acting together will form a triangle because there's no net force, there's no acceleration at this point. That will be the point at which things begin to move. So that's an equilibrium. The second thing we realize is that the line of action of each of the forces will pass through a single point, in this case, the center of the circle or the center of the wheel. And then using the law of sines and looking at the angle relationship between the sides and the angles there, that's how we can find the answer to these forces.